What's up, ladies? You with Budget Monk, and welcome to another update video. We're 253 years throughout the course of the game. Uh, currently in four wars, believe it or not, we have pieced out a bunch, and uh, I'm actually overextended with overextension events here in our face. So, welcome to the new generation of late game cancer, I guess. Uh, it's been it's been a long campaign, and after 250 years, you can see the difference we have made on the world, of course. Uh, look at that Hussite. Isn't that beautiful? Now, I wish this was all Hussite, guys. Uh, the sort of crossed out areas are, are quite strong when you zoom out with the Hussite color. But, um, yeah, they are not uh, very much converted at all, in fact. Um, so if we go to Diplomacy, I'm currently in war, but uh, Kazambi, Katsana, Mali, and Adele are all Hussite vassals of mine. Uh, Mali converts two provinces at a time, and so does Adele. So Adele is probably the smallest versus his conversion kind of potential. He, he's the smallest nation. And uh, speaking of Adele, uh, we're sitting here with overextension. When I get to peace, I'm actually going to give him all of this land, including those which are actually his cores, and he will convert them. Now, I did realize uh, I was just automatically doing that, and I won't do the other two, but I will let those finish. Uh, yeah, so I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an indication as to um, what it is like here as... We have the open and close the game issue, so my autonomy is like really good, which is always annoying. Uh, but as you can see, we have over a million troops. We're rocking with over a million troops, and we have taken the military hegemon. So we have proclaimed hegemony, and uh, of course the military hegemon immediately giving us the reduced war exhaustion by 0 0.1, it's a big modifier, and the provincial war score cost reduction. So with that being said, I'm currently at war with Colombia because in three years, the Age of Revolutions is going to begin ticking and it should take about 10 years for... So we have about a 13-year window, basically, from now where I have this 5 admin efficiency as well as that 10% reduced war score cost. Uh, so Colombia has been giving us hell, guys. Uh, I've gone all the way deep into professionalism. Basically, the professionalism is going to go. That's what... It has dawned on me that the professionalism is going to go uh, as we are in our sort of final burst here. Um, there will probably be a point as we expand that it will equalize. But believe it or not, guys, uh, I'm not going to click every single province for you. But Colombia at 130 war score is full annexable. He is full annexable. So I desperately wanted to uh, do this during this window. However, our capital is still in the Falklands. And speaking of which, Colombia was allied to Spain. We finally took Tauranga, where uh, this will become our new capital. And then we can finally begin colonizing uh, the New World, uh, uh, conquering the New World, and one-tagging the New World uh, in South America, that is. Now, if we had other provinces in South America, we wouldn't be able to move our capital. None of this is South America here. So I had a grand idea, because our strategy during this window, of course, is to full annex and release nations, much like Mali and Katsana, but namely, some of the greatest powers in the world, like Colombia is the sixth great power, that I otherwise would not be able to do if we weren't in this 13-year window. Well, the issue is that if we full annex Colombia, even though he doesn't give us that much of extension because he, uh, his provinces didn't exist in the beginning of the game, a lot of them give you zero overextension, as you can see, uh, the issue is then that would not make my capital isolated, so I couldn't move it. And uh, as far as releasing him as a vassal, that's what I was actually leaning towards. But I want to do that with so many other nations, uh, namely Langzang, Bengal, Jampur, Manchu, and possibly Yarkand, that we will start having diplo inefficiencies again. So keep in mind, I'm allied to Bengal right now, so we're two under. But yeah, I would go over my relations. And I had the smart idea, I suppose, of uh, we're going to feed it all to Mexico as he has a border. We can just hand it all to him. And ordinarily, subjects like Russia or so on wouldn't be that good at actually uh, acquiring such a massive amount of land. But it shouldn't give Mexico overextension either, of course. So he will be able to 
uh, core all of this and for us. And uh, that's actually an interesting prospect because from my uh, previous attempts at doing this run, we actually felt it quite hard. We felt the amount of admin here of all these provinces that don't give you overextension in the new world that I had to uh, core up as a as a last resort. You can see all of those. We're already accumulating them. That was quite costly. So the fact that we can integrate Mexico with the annexation cost reduction uh, cap, and it will be capped, by the way, because we'll take the golden era. The golden era combined with the innovativeness here, that's actually 15 point cost reduction. And we are at 80 annexation cost reduction if we take the parliamentary bonus. So yeah, I mean, that's that's 95 putting us over the cap. Uh, we're also going to be popping this um, Tech 27 to annex subjects as well, which uh, that uh, we'll lose five and then gain five, putting us at 80. So 80 um, admin efficiency is really good. Uh, not too worried about these rebels. They don't have anything like a fort. I'm just going to zip across and deal with that. But uh, yeah, it, it's rough, guys. So anyway, we're going to full annex Colombia. Uh, currently, what we're actually involved in is I'm using Great Britain, who is sort of the colonial dominate, dominant nation. He had uh, just the absolute vast majority of North America and Brazil. While colonial nations have 50% reduced war score cost. So if we full annexed uh, Britain, we would get English Brazil. And then uh, I would have to release them because we want a one tag. And this would actually bec be become multiple wars, right, as the war score doubled. Uh, so... Um, instead of killing the English, I, I'm basically killing their colonies here. Uh, that's what we're doing uh, whilst we fight this. We're going to full annex Colombia, feed it to Mexico. Uh, Kilwa is a full annexation and then release, which is basically going to generate another missionary. So you can see these missionaries here. Uh, Russia was ac actively converting two at a time and we were doing a full list um, the issue with Russia is he's actually got uh, perfect religious unity apart from this modifier now. So we need to feed him a little bit more to help us convert the world to Hussite. Uh, but I'm also trying to full annex and release Gen Poor right now, which is a little bit awkward. I'm going to take these two from a separate peace deal with Delhi to get coring range in here. That will cost me 12 Diplo. And then we want to occupy every single province that Gen Poor has. Is this is actually the war leader and uh, manually click them all. We should have the coring range through here. And then once I get to peace, we will release Kilwa, Janpour, hand off Colombia, hand off this part of uh, Arabia to Adel, and core up the remaining provinces. So this gives you a little bit of an indication as to how uh, full on it is. And it is full on. These numbers in Colombia and India have been giving us hell. I just, just got out of a war with the Timurids, where I actually took some provinces here. And the reason I took some provinces here is to also get the Timurids below the required amount in a separate peace deal here to actually full annex them. So in the case of the Timurids, I'm not going to re-release him as he would gain all these cores. And he's just simply... It, it, it's too many relations. So in the case of the Timurids, we know we can full annex him. So the plan is to give as much to Russia as possible... And then hopefully we are not overextended. Now we probably will be overextended if that is the case. We're just going to eat some overextension just like this. Over 100 I'm talking about. Uh, again, so that's how it goes. Uh, next up after Gen Poor, we're going to be attacking Lang Zhang with the full annexation and release. He's allied to Bengal. Now Bengal is my one and only ally. And I'm desperately hoping here that he will actually dishonor because of attitude towards enemies. So he's currently fighting this war against the Timurids. They just need to do a little bit of damage to him and he will dishonor. As soon as he dishonors, that puts us in a 1v1 against Lang Zhang. I will break my alliance and then in five years we're going to do the exact same thing against Bengal. Um, full annex and release. But due to this here, uh, we can walk through as an ally or as an enemy. Separate piece, full annex. At that stage we're going to use Lang Zhang as a platform to fight Ming. So the Ming Wars will commence. Uh, they have to. Ming has the highest dev provinces in the world, as per usual. This takes 640 months to cult to convert. And we have to start getting the separatism down, as there's a... Yeah, I mean, it's almost the year 1700. I mean, what is 640 months and years, guys? It's like, you know, like 58 years or something. Just ridiculous. And 30 years of separatism. 
So people might think uh, we're ahead of the game here with over 100 years remaining. Uh, I'm feeling the pressure big time. I really am. So Lang Zhang is going to be a platform into Ming. And the plan is to 100% overextend him, taking the highest dev provinces. We also want to make sure that we take adjacent forts like this, which prevent the rebels from uh, giving separatism when they occupy the province, because separatism will like ruin the run. Uh, and I'm literally going to have to have units as well as fighting the entire world uh, in position, ready to respond to the rebels. Um, and I'm going to go a little bit over 100 over extension and give some land to Lang Zhang. Uh, but before we piece Ming out, that is the intention, is to actually... Wow, good news, guys. Good news. I did not catch that at the end of my stream. Manchu was a tributary. And I was hoping that he would declare himself independent once again from Ming, and he has. Fantastic. So never mind. The idea was before we piece out Ming to a Dao Manchu, but he actually has no allies. Uh, perfect. Very, very good. So Manchu is going to be a full annex and release, or alternatively a full annex and uh, core what I can and feed Russia the rest, uh, which will probably opt to do theirs. But yeah, so I'm hoping in the next few years that we can basically do Jampur, Bengal, Lang Zhang, at, begin the Ming Wars, take out Manchu, uh, kill what is ours, basically, uh, Colombia is ours, move our capital, uh, then when our truces come up with England and Spain, we, we take over these instead of actually killing the colonial nations. Uh, Ch Chile, my truce is actually up with him. So that's a full annex. He'll give us very little overextension. We've got to be working on all the stuff simultaneously. Um, this is what we're looking at. But while we fight big wars like this, I've also been killing West Africans and feeding them to uh, Mali. So I'm hoping to do the same to uh, Zazu, which uh, we've actually been whack a mole the people who are in the coalition. So I think this coalition is small enough that if I was not embroiled in so many hardcore wars, it would leave. And then we could simply dow them. So... This guy will be fed to Adal, that will be fed to Katsana, um, this will be fed to Russia in the north, and uh, I'm hoping, regardless of if they don't go away, I can I can actually down Avaria, you can see, which will pull those guys out of the coalition. So the coalition's done for, more or less, we just need to keep winning, uh, but it's not holding us back too much, thankfully. Uh, we're going to be doing this literally now, uh, so my plan, actually, is to peace out the British soon. I want to get this province here so I can take province in Newfoundland. I'm going to take what I can because stupidly, I mean, I let it happen, but it's not like I can really stop them. They, they went for my capital here, guys. So we're getting war exhaustion, and I'm not happy with that. Uh, my war exhaustion does decrease if we get rid of that occupied home province. Um, modify them. So I'm going to get out of the British here, uh, taking over mostly provinces that give us no overextension. And then I'm going to take these units down here to kill this guy. So this is what we're doing a lot of this simultaneously. Uh, New Providence here is another target, but he's protected by the coalition. But that would disappear, giving zero overextension. Uh, so we really are uh, cleaning up a lot of tags. Like uh, Zazu and Timbuktu. When we down Timbuktu in three years, we're going to full annex uh, Morocco. You can see he's even at twice the war score. It's 60. So... We're going to do two of those uh, nations in three years. Uh, the Mamelukes, when the truce comes up here in four years, he's easily full annexable and actually won't give us 100 over extension either. Um, so we're really getting to the final stretch, guys, with tag nations. You know, two wars West Africa's done, two wars North Africa's... Oh, I guess there's Spain there. Uh, but you get the point, cleaning up each theater. One thing I'm going to try to do, a little cheeky move is I'm going to prep a colonist. So we've got one colonist going here and one colonist going here. That's from, I guess I haven't shown the YouTube video of my ideas in a while. Uh, we've taken religious diplo offensive influence, administrative and expansion. And uh, we've got two colonists. And when I full annex uh, Kilwa, as long as I'm at peace with a colonist ready, I think I can send one here and then release Kilwa. And we actually have a colonist going here. I believe so. And then when that colony is finished, I'm going to give it to uh, Kazambi, who is slowly converting one province at a time. It is slow. He's only got one missionary. But uh, he does not he's not very big, is the thing. And then with Imperialism CB, I'm hoping to uh, obviously feed that to Kazambi. 
uh, given some time. He he spawned in with no Monarch Points, and we gave him the Congo, so he's hurting a little bit from Monarch Points, but he should be able to manage that. And yeah, that's obviously uh, Central Africa done. Spain and France both have their capital in South Africa, so they are basically Africans in that sense right now. And uh, yeah, it, it's really, really, really slow, guys. Do you know... I started this set of wars alongside other wars. So this was actually Yemen who was allied to Ajuran, and we full annexed them both from the Yemenese peace deal. Um, I started these wars, uh, a couple more wars. Uh, we killed uh, Jean inside of uh, Mali at the same time alongside these wars. And, um, you know, I haven't finished them, guys, in one entire stream. I went on longer than normal. We, we reached almost five hours, and I, I didn't... So. Kilwa is only literally on this month full and exable. Uh, but we have to wait to finish all the other wars simultaneously. So it's rough, man. And those two wars that we are waiting on are the Indian and Colombian wars. Uh, so I've got to make sure that we don't regress on the Kilwa war in the meantime. And that he doesn't liberate any significant province or he's walked all the way up here and deal some serious damage to us. Uh, in other news, guys, we've enforced religion on all of my subjects, and they're absolutely pissed. And the plan is to basically appease them all. This is a big concern, I must admit, guys. Like, I'm putting my prestige into it. Uh, one of the strategies, which we are going to have to do, is to basically build up their country's forts and build as many forts as we have building slots um, to stress their economy. And then you also take their trade income, and by that, they can basically make a deficit, and then you can buy their liberty desire by paying off their debt. Uh, this is something we're going to have to do. Uh, but luckily, the age of ref revolutions, which we don't really want to come because we'll lose this, but it's inevitable it will come, gives you actually reduced uh, uh, liberty desire from your subjects during that age. And also, the 100 modifier of enforced religion, you can see, is going away. So, um, yeah, I think now that we have, you can see the relative power, that relative power was a pr big problem, but I've ramped all the way up to a million units, and you can see that all the vassals combined, right, as of now, are barely stronger than me. So, yeah, I hope that's sufficient, guys. Obviously, the coalition map mode is a nightmare. And it's only going to get worse. We're going to begin attacking uh, Lang Zang, uh, Buddhists, Confucius, uh, Hindu nations. Uh, that's the Hussite. The diplomatic map mode, which is going to grow here a lot in Asia. Really feeling good about the um, sheer amount of Hussite in the New World and just feeling slow in general outside of the New World. That's how this game has been, the narrative of this game. And then finally, the Roman culture. That is how it looks right now, guys. A lot of enclaves nowadays, islands, which are going to be giving adjacency around the world. Uh, that is how it looks. So pretty massive now. Genuinely pretty massive. We have um, been doing the cultural conversion reduction here. And then I've got on to some... Uh, we annexed some of the European tags with this. But uh, in three years... We, we could flip back, but uh, the Enlightenment gives you the culture conversion cap once again. So we're going to be actually using the missionary and missionary strength bonus for 10 years from the Parliament until we go for annex, trying to annex these guys after that. And uh, I wanted to show you, we should be converting quite some still to our our culture. There's, there's a lot of provinces being converted. I don't know, maybe 80 or 100 or something like that. Uh, but yeah, it's a little bit of a lull here because I'm not at the cultural conversion cap. I haven't been. So um, again, we're, I am putting them down on cultural conversions with adjacency, but it's just a little bit inefficient because we're not at the cap. So I'm trying to do it slowly but surely, keeping my points high. We grab the institution and then we will dump them all again into uh, massive uh, cultural conversions. Um, yeah, so... All in all, guys, I actually feel pretty good about this run, but it's really painful and really hard to guess. Like, again, I just want to stress that I've been at war all over the world simultaneously, like in Britain, everywhere, simultaneously, for like five hours straight. Uh, and uh, I feel like I'm making like no headway, like on this war. I mean, we are. We're here. 
you know, Delhi falls, we take two, and then uh, we flood through. Yeah, it's just rough, man. It's really rough, but uh, that's what it's like trying to do the hardest run of all time, I suppose, guys, trying to conquer all of the world simultaneously. Uh, I hope, I'm sorry about this obnoxious events here that's going to be kind of standard for us in the future. But uh, nonetheless, if we do Kilwa, Genpur, Bengal Langzang, and Manchu, that's what I'm thinking about. That is at least five missionaries and maybe more. So I think Kilwa has religious, for example. Um, apparently Langzang has religious as well. Awesome. So maybe seven missionaries. Uh, now for the relations, we, Bengal is already the case. So plus four relations instead of five. Um, we're going to be looking at uh, basically wasting three diplo points per month until we are able to actually annex these guys, which it's it's almost has been 10 years here with Katsana, which was the first release, but it's about appeasing them. It's about appeasing them and being at peace and having the annexation cost reduction jammed. Uh, it's tough. It's tough and it's hard, but it's very important right now that we do the one faith quickly and spawning these missionaries so that they convert their provinces and potentially more is the way to go without doubt. So we can waste some more Diplo. I'm not con concerned about the one culture. Like, we can waste some Diplo. Uh, our, our good ruler lived for ages, guys, who was in the last video, which I was hoping would live. He did live for a long time. He was like 54. We're working with this now. And we do have 300 admin here to help us actually move our capital. So we're doing pretty well for uh, Monarch Points. 300 Monarch Points here to help us culture convert. And... Uh, yeah, I think that's a sufficient update, guys. We've been struggling with governing capacity big time. I actually have two loans, so I actually load, loaned up to buy buildings. Uh, in this case, uh, actually, manpower has been a huge issue because I had to ramp all the way up to a million units, and that's why I've been slacking standards. I wanted to make the slacking standard as much as possible. So, for example, in Paris, areas with building slots, we dumped these. We've been doing the uh, trading company bonuses here for improved manpower. Uh, governing capacity keeps we keep resolving it by just pumping hundreds of these we can do about four per month and then all of a sudden we're over governing capacity again and we just keep pumping we do have governing capacity coming here that's good uh it, it's crazy guys it's really crazy um i i had to do manufactories which i didn't particularly want to do it's a lot of money and time to complete our german mission which is bottlenecked um yeah, I hope that's a sufficient update, guys. It's just, uh, it's going to be like three weeks of this, basically. Maybe less. Two and a half weeks, we'll see. Uh, but I'm looking forward to it in a way. Uh, it's going to be glorious. And we're all still, we're all still believers here, right, guys? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you live or I'll see you in the next update video.